So, you know, when something like Big Finish comes along and, you, and you're still playing those parts afterwards, you know, what we said about actors and not a lot of work, it's quite a lucky thing that you were in this thing that for whatever reason took off and everybody remembers and you're still getting work from it now. God bless Big Finish. Yeah. I've just done one. Yes, it's been an entry recently. Has it? Yeah. Have you all heard about this? I'm back. Yay! Yes, I said, would you like to come back and play Victoria? And I paused, only for about two seconds, and I went, yes. <laughs> and it, it was a great day. A great day, a hard day, but a great day. Great lunch. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and Toby does the lunches, doesn't he? Don't. Oh, he does. Oh, he does. But uh, they were so lovely. I, I was with Fraser Hines, of course, playing Jamie, and the lovely David Warner. You know David? Yeah, we love David Warner. Oh, he's smashing. Mm -hmm. He raves about Big Finish. He, oh. he comes to all the events. He just... But when David first got onto the circuit, he was very shy. <coughs> he didn't want to know about all this. He'd hide around the corner. You know what I mean? But now he's got so much confidence. He's a brilliant. He's had a wonderful, stunning career. You know what I Oh, anyway. Now I did this and it worked very well actually. Victoria came back to me just like that. And I thought maybe I should hire the voice just a little after 47 years. <laughs> and so I slightly did it and I thought, no, no, forget it, just still here. And I enjoyed every minute. Okay. Carol, Carol, you really ran with it with, with Big Finish because I know. You know, we all know the reservations you had about the original part and the scripts. Now, I said earlier when you were signing the Verd story for me that it was so lovely for you to get something really meaty. Well, the Verd story is amazing. Yeah. Uh, domain of the Verds, anybody know it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? I mean, you know, who oh dear, if only they'd filmed that when I was doing it, you know, for real. Yeah. Fabulous. But I mean, the scripts generally are so fantastic. They just saw, I mean, you go to all sorts of extraordinary domains you would never been to before. I mean, and they, for me, it's been an absolute revelation because they've developed the Susan character in a way that was never done when I was, when I was playing her. I was never extended in any way, you know, but now it's just amazing. I mean, they have me as a, a grown-up Susan, you know, a lady. In fact, I think I've been president of one of the, one of the planets. You have, yeah. <laughs> Which was brilliant. So, have Why you... can't I be... Grown up Victoria. <laughs> well, ask them to write you it. Yes, <coughs> I want to be grown up Victoria. <laughs> we'll get on to yeah. something, we'll get well, written. I mean, Big Finish is really like life after death. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 of course, you get the sustenance, you get the food that Toby oh, makes as well. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, uh, they, are, they really treat you very well at Big Finish. They're sweet people, nice people with a lot of imagination, and they've, as I say, they've given us a, a, a work as our allowed our old characters to live. When probably if you put a camera on us, people would say, "Who's that?" Yeah. <laughs> um, but the voice doesn't change so much, uh, and so that's great. But we always stop for lunch, and uh, Toby, who um, is in control of the uh, actual studio. Um, is a, a master chef and he cooks everything sort of freshly and I think a lot of people... In a minute kitchen, what he does in the Oh, absolutely, kitchen. yes. Yeah, they are legendary. So, um, Richard, you spoke a little bit about, you touched on celebrity earlier on, and um, again, going back to your DWM when you were going through Verity scrapbooks, Carol, yeah. um, you spoke about working with Adam Faith, and I know Deb she worked with David Essex and Cliff, when they weren't real, you know, massive pop stars and people screaming. And certainly you, Carol, had that because, Doc, you know, the Dalek Mania and all that. And I know you, you had to go in a helicopter one time and stuff like that. So, having been around that, you know, kind of, what did you feel about that? Was it, I imagine it was scary, but was that, you know, was it something you thought I'd quite like a bit of that? Or, <laughs> right? No, no, no. No, I, I was never, ever in this business uh, to try and be a star. I just, I'm in the business because I love acting. I just love it. But you can't do it on your own. And you can't do it without the slot. You know, as you said, you know, what, what you get back from the audience is confirmation that you're doing something which pleases and yeah. which is creative. And I mean, for me, quite honestly, for me, um, the best time is rehearsals. You know,
know, when you're discovering about your character and interacting with your, your mates, the other actors, you know, and something is processed out of this marvellous author's imagination, you can see, it must be extraordinary for the author, actually. I've always thought it must be amazing to be a playwright and see your, what was in your brain coming to life. It's, I'm glad you said that, actually, because with you, with you William, um, Jackie and Phil Hartnell, and Debbie, with you and Fraser and Pat, and also with your era, you can see, because people don't, you know, people don't rehearse now, but you can see with you guys that you, you can see the bonds between the actors coming through and the characters. Mm -hmm. um, and we become a little family. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't know about nowadays, because now I know it's filmed, you know, as in films, so you have the bites here and bites there, and it's not consecutive. Whereas when we did it, it was created through, I mean, it was the same with you two, um, it was created through a week of rehearsals, culminating in a performance which was like doing it live. It was more like theatre, it was more like doing a live show. Um, and so therefore, you do create tremendous bonds, especially when you know you can't stop and cut and do it again. You know, you've got to carry on through no matter what. So you support each other. Well, it, um, it absolutely comes across on the screen. So. I remember that very well, actually, because we had rehearsal time. Maybe, I don't know, five days, whatever. And you went to the studio on the Saturday. <coughs> And, as you say, used to bond, Fraser, Pat and myself, we had so much chemistry, and it actually came across, I think, when you see the episodes. And thank goodness the episodes have now been found. Yes! yes. 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 Thank you. Um, so, it, I, I don't know, I remember, when we went into the studio, and the time was very tight to actually shoot it, and we actually used to run from one scene <coughs> to the other, changing our costumes. Careful not sure. to trip over the cables. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> don't trip over the cables. We're going, where well, are we going next? Yeah, you know, yeah. It was extraordinary. It was like the change in the theatre. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was yeah. like live TV. Yeah. That was extraordinary. I know, the added feast on of having, having Fraser Hines and not quite knowing what he might be doing, <laughs> what he might be up to uh, with you, Debbie. I knew exactly what phrase was <laughs> Oh yes, and I won't let him forget it either. <laughs> uh, what uh, Carol was saying about um, uh, uh, enjoying rehearsals very much. Um, I, I, the thing about, about acting is, is fascinating because when you you've got yourself sorted out and you've looked in the mirror and you've accepted what you see in the mirror, you can then start thinking more about um, the characters that you're playing. And the rehearsal is so interesting because uh, you delve very deep into the characters that you're playing. And so you learn uh, from each other an awful lot about people and about motivation and about gesture and body language. And um, all these things you need to know about in order to produce a convincing character on stage. But the actual process of discovery is it, fascinating, actually. And then, of course, when the curtain goes up on the first night, uh, if, you're, if we're talking about, uh, about the live audience, the audience teaches you an enormous amount about uh, the truth of, of what you're, what you're uh, trying to do. If it's comedy, of course, um, uh, they laugh. If you have genuinely found truth and are technically funny, um, but um, uh, we learn a lot from the audience. But then after about three or four weeks, it does become a bit repetitive, actually. Try to do it for a year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when did you do it for a year? Why did I? No, when? When? Express it won't go. I did yeah. that for over a year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Touch, did, um... Touching on what you were saying about um, exploring your character, I was playing, <coughs> excuse me, I was playing a drug addict. And uh, I had to really, really explore the world of the drug addict. And I got friendly with a doctor who prescribed for them. And uh, I got to know my character very, very well. But I, must, I won't say who they were or what the production was, but <laughs> there were a few members of the cast who were desperate to get me to explore the world of the drug addicts even more. <laughs> How can you do it? Well, you know, if I play a murder, I don't commit murder, do I? <laughs> you know, but uh, there were quite a few in the car suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I always say no. I always say no. Get a reaction to say something there, sorry. I appeared a couple of balls. <laughs> <laughs> that was very interesting. I think you did as well, didn't you, Carol? I did, I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I waited for ages after I finished Doctor Who uh, because I was offered loads and loads and loads of things which were almost identical to Susan. And I thought, no, no, no. I, and including, funnily enough, uh, Dear the Triffids, not Dear the Triffids, uh, the Centrinian's train robbery. Um, they asked me to play the Portland Mason part, which was a teenage girl, one, one of the mad Centrinian's girls. And I said, no, 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 definitely not. I'm not going to play a girl again. I want to play a, a woman's part. So anyway, I waited and waited and waited. And finally, finally, I was asked to do this marvellous part of a war in public eye and uh, it was a really juicy part and I thought this will do it, this will kill it, stone dead, now they'll see me as something other than Susan. And what happened? I got, it was, it was on after nine o'clock, after the nine o'clock line, show. yeah, and uh, I got hundreds and hundreds of letters from <laughs> Irene to parents saying, what do you think you're doing? I let my children stay up to watch you because they thought you were going to be Susan. I don't know. Oh, I'm anxious. Uh, Richard, ever been a hooker? <laughs> no, I smoked one. <laughs> no, I've always played uh, extraordinary, sort of clean, boring parts like Captain My Gates. Um, no, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. But um, no, uh, I, I had uh, an opportunity to be a, an absolute S blank blank T uh, in. Yes, that's right. S blank blank T <laughs> um, uh, um, on um, uh, Emmerdale Farm uh, as Dennis Reek, and he was a horror. He really was an unpleasant guy. And there was one uh, that my character. Um, I don't know if any of you saw it, but um, uh, his um, motive was to buy up all the farms in Emmerdale and turn them into quarries and put all the people out of work. That didn't matter. He was making a fortune. Um, anyway, there was one scene I remember which was rather nice um, with uh, Richard Thorpe, um, known familiarly as the fat man. I can't remember what he's I know about. exactly who you mean. Yeah. Alan, Alan, Alan Turner. Turner. That's right. That's right, yes. That's it. And um, anyway, uh, he was very grand uh, in real life as well. And um, he liked the good life, did Richard. And um, in the Emmerdale farm, um, we used to film on, in Creskell Hall, which is a rather nice country house. And um, Richard's character's office was in this hall. And um, of course, I just, uh, as uh, Dennis Reed, sold the ball and got rid of everything. Um, but before that happened, um, everyone was very worried about what was going to happen, you know, whether they were going to lose their jobs. And I remember being given a prop, a, a, a mobile phone, and the scene was simply me going to Richard. I mean, he's a horrible character. And he said, um, what the man's name was? Alan. Alan. Alan, Alan Turner. Yeah. That's right, Alan Turner. I went up to him and I said, Alan. Um, I look a little bit worried, but um, I've got a very nice um, advance for you. I've got, I've got a very nice proposal to make for you. I've got you a new office. And you were very pleased about having a new office. And I had it in the mobile phone. I said, that's it. <laughs> Just keep on the line. <laughs> you had it in your pocket. And isn't that what's happening in the world now? As well? I mean, it's being replaced by mobile phone. phone. I'm afraid we have to end it there. So sorry we didn't get to any audience questions. I've been told we have to wind it up, I'm afraid. Oh. Why are we 